Welcome to The Wrench, a platform for examination, design, and refinement of constructs and language for and by the gaming community. Today we're going to talk about and hopefully present a worthwhile alternative to political correctness. Let's begin. In modern usage, political correctness is a term that doesn't have a lot of value, as it's almost always ever used as a dirty trick. Movie Bob summed it up pretty well in an episode of The Big Picture, which I recommend watching the entirety of if you get the chance. No, the reason I'm sick of hearing about PC is because these days the only manner in which it exists is as a shield for jerks to defend themselves from people pointing out that they're jerks. It's like some kind of satanic rhetorical judo. Say something bigoted and hurtful, and if anyone calls you on it, no worries. Just accuse them of trying to enforce political correctness. Suddenly, they're the bad guys, and you're a mighty warrior for free speech. Ugh. It's a Darvo maneuver exquisitely crafted to reframe an arguably harmful action as a heroic one. It's actually a lot more devious than many people give it credit for. See, according to one of the earliest reported American uses of the term, it originated in the late 1940s, where it was used by socialists to mock hardline communists who were in favor of the Hitler-Stalin non-aggression pact. They argued that it was immoral for the Soviet Union to stand by while Nazi Germany invaded Poland and committed atrocities, and that those who agreed with that stance were only mindlessly agreeing with whatever their political party had happened to tell them. I really want to underline how hilarious the current use of political correctness is with this context in mind. It manages to both be a McCarthyist Red Scare tactic and an invocation of Godwin's law. It's a work of goddamn evil genius. If you tell someone they're a jerk for using a word you don't like, you are literally Hitler Stalin. Stitler. Stilter. It becomes a sort of ad hominem attack where you argue that someone only wants to avoid offending people because they're blindly moving in lockstep with their political group. It attacks the motivation and not the merits of the action itself. The counter-argument, of course, is that someone could, through introspection and rationality, come to a conclusion which happens to match a political group's stance on something. I mean, of course they could, since to argue otherwise would require making the hilarious assertion that all political groups are wrong about everything, always. Therefore, we should only really be making an accusation of political correctness if we feel that someone hasn't adequately thought through the ramifications of their stance for themselves. So. Is this a valid criticism to make about the way we deal with language? To a certain extent, yes. As Stephen Fry said in that one quote often brought up obnoxiously by Gamergate, simply avoiding certain language to avoid offending people is pointless. No matter what, you're gonna offend someone. As many a YouTube commenter has illustrated, there are even people who will be offended by others being offended by things. Worse still, as Catherine Cross points out far more intelligently than I ever could in her article on Offense Discourse, trying not to offend anyone cripples our ability to say things that desperately need to be said. It allows those in power to control the conversation. After all, having the visibility and volume to effectively express offense is a somewhat privileged position in itself. So, if trying not to offend people is worthless, then why not just say whatever you want? Movie Bob argues that what people refer to as political correctness is simply being nice, which he contrasts with being a jerk. I think that's kinda simplistic. Others tend to call on basic human decency, which has its own set of problems as none of those words really fit. It's not basic, because if it were, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Referring to it as human is kind of meaningless, because humans as a species do a lot of terrible and deranged stuff that don't even occur to most of the animal kingdom, and decency is another vague, moralistic, and prescriptive term. Catherine Cross argues that we should instead be concerned with certain language because of the harms they cause, either through inciting people to violence or simply through destroying someone's well-being through harassment and character assassination. We run into a couple problems here, though. Firstly, many people don't believe that things people say can actually lead to direct harm on people. I think this sort of skepticism is misguided, as there is a lot of literature which shows the damage that behavior like this can cause. It's not hard to find. The other problem is far more troubling, though. 
See, by claiming that someone should avoid saying or doing things that can hurt other people, we are building on a fairly large moral assumption that the well-being of other human beings is a moral good. Forgive me this monstrous question, but is it? What does that mean? Maybe it's just my inexperience with philosophy talking, but I can't find any reason to see morality as anything other than a construct. It seems like each of us looks at the things we want, whether due to biology or culture, and then apply mystical significance to those wants. Some people feel a strong urge to be personally successful and then decide that industriousness is a good, and that people should be judged based on how much they express that trait. Some people feel a strong religious affiliation and then decide that piety is good, and that people should be judged on that. Some people experience unpleasantness at the thought of the suffering of others and decide that people should be judged by how empathetic they are. It seems to me like this type of thinking is somewhat egotistical. I have this trait, so people who don't have it must be worse than me. How can we say for certain that our set of pet values happens to be the correct one? If two people can look at each other and both with absolute certainty declare that they are a good person and that the other is a bad person, they should both have reason for some serious introspection. Are you absolutely sure that you're special enough to align with whatever the universe happened to decide people should be doing and thinking? More critically, imagine a scenario where the universe has an opinion about what people should and shouldn't do. Should we say that modifying our behavior based on its wishes is good or just prudent? All this to say, simply implying that modifying your language is good or decent, is meaningless to me because I have no idea if my version of those terms is the same as yours. However, many individuals, myself included, do have very strong opinions about what words people should and shouldn't use. When expressing this, though, people really seem to stumble around a bit. Political correctness may be an awful term used almost exclusively by those trying to oppose the idea, but since we have no other adequate way to describe what we want, a lot of us end up using it anyway, or fumble around with moralistic terms and vague generalizations. So I think we should come up with a construct which more appropriately describes and promotes the idea while also addressing the problems presented by the terms currently in popular use. In order to do so, it should avoid relying on morality, political affiliation, and defensiveness as reasons for using it. I propose responsible communication. We can be said to be practicing responsible communication when we examine the moral values of those we may offend. In order to do this, we can ask ourselves two questions about the language we use. One, do I value the things that they value? Two, does my language actually go against the things they value? If you said no to one or both of those questions, you are presented with a third question. Is it worth the consequences for me to continue to use this language? If you say yes, then you should understand and accept the way others will react to your choices. So, let's apply this to political correctness. How would someone who wishes to use a term that has been labeled as a slur weigh the benefits and consequences resulting from use of that slur? To start with, what are the moral values of those who would wish you to avoid using it? We can look at the words that they choose to employ. From my earlier examples, Movie Bob used the term nice, while others use the word decency, while Catherine Cross used the terms harm and oppression. These all seem to stem from value systems which prioritize the feelings and safety of others. Someone who acts in a way that is mindful and protective of others' feelings can be said to be nice or decent to them, while someone who ignores or intentionally detracts from those feelings is mean, or a jerk, or a douchebag for inflicting harm on them. Since empathy is the primary reason someone would care about harm being caused to other people, we can argue that this is an empathy-based value system. This suggests we can more accurately refer to what has been labeled as political correctness as empathetic communication. So we have two questions to ask. One, do I value the things that they value? As in, do you actually care whether or not you harm another human being? Do other people's feelings matter to you? 
Do you care if you are contributing to systemic oppression? And two, does my language actually go against the things they value? Does using a slur actually hurt people? Does using a slur actually contribute to systems of oppression? Do these systems of oppression even exist? Does the avoidance of slurs actually cause more harm in some way? If you say no to either of these questions, then you can ask yourself whether it's worthwhile to continue using the slur. Do a cost-benefit analysis. What are the potential benefits of using a slur? Note that the following are not opinions that I personally hold. 1. Continuing to use language that others want to stop you from using can be seen as some sort of individualistic expression of freedom. 2. Certain terms can be seen as funnier or more powerful, and that continuing to use them causes your vocabulary to be more effective at accomplishing its intended purpose. 3. Certain terms can be seen as more accurate than their replacements, even though they have taken on negative connotations. What are the consequences of continuing to use a slur? 1. People will think that you are prejudiced against certain groups of people. They may refer to you as a bigot. If you actually do dislike these groups of people, this may be an accurate term. 2. People will think that you don't care about other people's feelings. They may refer to you as a douchebag. If you actually don't, this also may be an accurate term. 3. People may try to expel you from whatever community that you happen to be in. You may become banned from forums or social media sites. 4. You may be let go from your place of employment. 5. You may contribute to an atmosphere of prejudice and hostility towards minority groups. As a result, individuals in those groups will end up feeling hurt, unwelcome, and in some cases in fear for their lives. 6. As statistics gathered by the League of Legends Tribunal indicate, you will likely lose more matches in the games that you play. Frankly, it doesn't seem worth it to me, as most of us have a big enough vocabulary that the loss of a single word isn't really a big deal. I think creative trash talk can be funnier and cut deeper than relying on the same couple of words all the time. Do it like this guy. I didn't mean to say that the Enterprise should be hauling garbage. I meant to say that it should be hauled away as garbage. <laughs> Of course, the point of setting all this up is that my opinion shouldn't matter. This is a tool, and you're supposed to come up with your own answer. Is it worth it to you? Fine. But understand that you have chosen this set of consequences for yourself by doing so. If douchebag is an accurate description of your values and behavior, why not simply wear it with pride? If you don't think there's anything morally wrong with being that, then why does it bother you? Now. When I say accept the consequences, I'm not saying you should lie down and take them without saying anything about it. You may feel that the consequences aren't reasonable. Maybe people should just toughen up and stop taking what you say so seriously. You can still work to convince people not to follow through with those consequences or try to enact legislation which could protect you from them. Just understand that the value systems you're going against are deeply ingrained within a large portion of society, and in this situation you likely won't have much of a chance. Is it worth it? Then fight on, I guess. Now, call me optimistic, but I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that most people do care about the well-being of others. I think most people would agree with that, but disagree that their behavior is actually causing harm. If they're saying this in good faith, we're in a really good position. We can have a discussion about science and psychology and maybe come to an understanding. However, if you don't mind hurting people and admit it straight away, we can avoid a pointless argument which will go nowhere, and everyone will be better for it. Finally, just like last time, I will now apply the construct to myself. First, though I avoid certain terms because they refer to specific groups of people in a disparaging way, I do often still use vulgar language. Fuck shit, damn crap, penis vagina. There are many people in the world who strongly dislike when people use language like this. Because it is profane or offensive. This seems to suggest a moral value system which values aesthetics. It could also refer to a think of the children style of thinking, where children may be affected by the language that they hear. 
This could imply an empathetic stance. Their lives will be harmed, or a religious one. They will be corrupted. I haven't seen anything that indicates there's any legitimacy to the former stance, and I don't share the beliefs that the latter stance relies on. Since I do not see profanity or offensiveness as immoral, I will continue to use these fucking words. As a result, many people may decide that I am vulgar. I accept the label of vulgar as an accurate label for my behavior and because I don't see vulgarity as a flaw, will wear it with pride. That said, I know that vulgar language can cause me problems in certain contexts. If I'm in a library, I'm not going to suddenly shout, I fucking love the library! Because they have every right to kick me out because of it. I will modulate the level of my profanity based on circumstances because I have a large enough vocabulary to make up for its absence. Next, there are certain words I use which have a religious connotation which are offensive to certain individuals. Again, I see very little harm from using these terms in most contexts and accept that people will label me as profane or sinful as a result. These words accurately describe how I fit into their system of morality and I understand why they see me in that light. I choose to continue using these words and accept the consequences which could result, god damn it. Though again, I will modulate this based on my surroundings to avoid causing a scene. So that's my shot at this. I'll be honest, this was an incredibly difficult concept to handle and I can see a couple holes in my logic already. The most notable of which is the fact that wanting people to take responsibility for their actions is itself a moral stance. Is it enough to argue that it's beneficial in a practical sense to do so? What do you think? Let me know in the comments if this seems like a useful construct to you. Are there any areas in which you aren't practicing responsible communication? Have you worked through a similar process in the past? Either way, I've been Falafelcopter, and this has been The Wrench.